very good evening friends this is dr joseph from school of management chris jayanti college i have been in the banking industry for almost 8 uh, years and then i moved to academics and um, i started teaching the systems related papers and marketing related papers currently i teach uh, marketing and uh, analytics papers to the mba students when i was invited to speak to the students through this knowledge exchange program i thought this particular topic supply chain and indian perspective would be very apt for the students of both the uh, appalachian state university and the mba students from krishna jayanti college so without any delay we'll uh, quickly go to the presentation the supply chain uh, what i am going to discuss is with respect to the textile industry in india and i am going to speak about a particular city in india which is a textile hub for exports and it is very fondly called as infant japan or dollar city uh, probably because it brings in lot of dollars to the country it is also called as textile city cotton city because it is well known for the cotton uh, garments and it is also called as a net city because uh, this particular city accounts for uh, phenomenally accounts for uh, more than 60% of the total exports of the netwear um, from india and um, it is hence called as the netwear capital of Uh, india so what is the city that i am talking about where is the city and uh, so let us go to the indian map and here we have the southern states of uh, india and um, our krishna jayanti college is in the state of karnataka do you see that state which is in uh, dark green color dark green it is written karnataka and um, do you see that uh, another state called tamil nadu which is in um, orange color uh, this the state is named as tamil nadu so the country of india is divided into multiple states and the states which are highlighted here are the southern states of the country and in which the city which i am talking about the dollar city is located in the state of tamil nadu which is the southernmost state of the indian subcontinent so it is located over there so let us zoom into the uh, state of tamil nadu so if you look at this this is the uh, map of the state of tamil nadu don't worry about all this colorful <laughs> jigsaw puzzles uh, i'll quickly take you to the uh, state which we are focusing today if you look at the leftmost extreme you see a green color a uh, state which is mentioned as nilgiris underneath nilgiris you have a light blue color which says coimbatore next to the coimbatore to the right you have a a purple kind of a color where it is written tirupur right so we are going to focus on this particular city tirupur which is called as the dollar city okay so let us go deeper into this particular city tirupur um, as i said the indian subcontinent is divided into states each and every state is, is divided into cities or districts each and every district is again subdivided into something called as taluks okay so here the tirupur district is divided into um, you know six um, taluks you can see it in different uh, colors including the tirupur taluk in the center the light yellow color the tirupur uh, taluk which is our dollar city which is the headquarters of the tirupur district okay so uh, we are going to speak about this particular small you know city in the southernmost state of tamil nadu in the subcontinent india which is actually a um, a global supplier of knitwear garments um and it generates enormous amount of foreign exchange and trade to the indian subcontinent and we move to the dollar city over here and um, 
little bit of history about this Dala city. The river stream, what you see here, is called as the Noel River. And um, this particular city uh, was, um, you know, developed or uh, the civilization started uh, surrounding this particular river called as Noel River. And the people from the Tirupur city were primarily farmers and they depended uh, completely on the waters of this particular river. Even today there are farmers, but then most of the farmers in those days itself, they learned the art of making the garments, especially the garments made out of cotton. And um, looking at the profitability of this particular business, most of the farmers, uh, they switched to the uh, garment business rather than doing the agricultural business. And uh, so the civilization of Tirupur city started over this particular river. So when we speak about this Tirupur city, I would like to uh, introduce a particular person called as, uh, he is called as Tirupur Kumaran. His name was Kumaran and uh, he is called as Tirupur Kumaran. Now this particular young person, uh, he died at the age of 26. And uh, what is the specialty of this particular person called Kumaran from Tirupur? Uh, India was under the British rule and uh, in the year 1932 uh, Mahatma Gandhiji was leading the freedom struggle and he was arrested, protests were everywhere across the country and um, there was a protest staged in the Tirupur city as well and um, the young Kumaran who was 26 years old was part of this particular team which was protesting against the British rule and uh, during that time the Britishers had ordered strictly that no one should take up the Indian flag and raise it and during this struggle which was uh, you know um, themed by Mahatma Gandhiji basically by means of Ahimsa uh, means uh, fighting for freedom using non-violence so they were uh, protesting and uh, they were holding the Indian flags which was prohibited at that time and it was Tirupur, the Kumaran uh, the Tirupur Kumaran who was there at the front with the Indian flag in his hand and the uh, British armies and soldiers uh, and the uh, police they restricted the protesting team and um, uh, the team was very adamant they were uh, uh, raising slogans against the British rule and they were raising the flags the Indian flags and then the police um, you know attacked this particular team and um, many of the uh, fighters they flew away but then Kumbaran stood there with the flag in his hand and took all the beatings from the police and then he was uh, 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 beaten up very badly he got injured very badly he was bleeding and then he uh, was um, almost he was in his deathbed at that point of time he fell down to the ground and even at that point of time it is said that Kumaran held to the national flag tightly in his hand and when he was brought home he was found dead already still holding the uh, national flag in his hand and we were all uh, you know talked uh, talk about uh, the importance of the national flag through the example of this young man Tirupur Kumaran who died on January 11, 1932 um, and he was a very patriotic person and uh, he has a title called as Kodi Katha Kumaran Kodi means flag and he protected the flag and um, so that's the title he received and in the year 2004 Indian government uh, you know released a stamp in his memory and the Dala city what we are talking about is famous for the knitted garments uh, uh, made from cotton and um, uh, so that is that is the city which is famous for uh, finally uh, not just the river not just uh, Kumaran but it is now it is very famous for the uh, 
knitted cotton garments that it manufactures every day and night which gets exported to the entire world of course the noel river what you see here is highly polluted today not at all suitable for drinking not at all suitable for agriculture not at all suitable for any human consumption it is very polluted and um, that is the state of uh, noel river and most of the agricultures agriculturists are very unhappy with the uh, you know the pollutants being or the effluents from these uh, textile units being dumped into this particular river of course government intervened and then lot of measures were taken to uh, stop the effluents being uh, you know pumped into the river and now it has reduced a lot but still the water is not very uh, conducive for uh, human consumption okay few facts about the tirupur city it's a very small city spanning across say 30 to 35 square kilometers of area having a population of roughly 0.9 million and it accounts for 90% of india's cotton knitwear exports and hence it is called as the capital of knitwear uh, you know uh, exports almost 3000 plus garment stitching units 700 plus dye houses 1500 plus knitting units 15000 tons of cotton yarn consumed every year approximately uh, 0.6 million skilled workers in that uh, 0.6 million skilled workers 0.4 million workers are migrant workers so tirupur attracts lot of were skilled laborers from the neighboring states and also from states in the northern india and there are migrants even from the neighboring countries like nepal and sri lanka who work in the tirupur city uh, the sales from the tirupur city was once it was in indian rupees 0.15 billion in the year 1985 it grew to indian rupees 500 billion in the year 2019 so that is the growth growth trajectory of the tirupur city and its exports exports worth uh, indian rupees 260 billion in 2019 of course tirupur caters to a phenomenal amount of uh, domestic sales as well it was it is almost like 50 50 uh, percentage uh, primarily the global sales is driven by the kids wear and women wear they do other uh, categories as well but these are the two categories that drive the sales uh, from tirupur and the major uh, market for the garments cotton garments from tirupur is europe uh, followed by us and latin america and africa those are the major uh, destiny export destinations um, and the nearest airport is uh, coimbatore city airport which is almost 45 kilometers from the tirupur city and they have uh, two sea ports one is tutukurin and uh, the chennai port even though the chennai port is far away but it is much more prominent uh, in terms of uh, processing your uh, goods and uh, you know delivering it to the destination so uh, the preferred destination is the chennai port than the tutukurin port which is in the south okay so this is roughly the uh, facts about uh, the tirupur uh, city moving on to the next topic fiber to fabric the fiber what we are talking about over here is the fiber what we get from the cotton seeds the cellulose of cotton and uh, the from the cotton seed the cotton fiber is separated and then uh, through the process called as ginning and then it it moves to the spinning mills where the cotton fiber is uh, uh, spinned into a yarn okay what we get out of the spinning mill is called as the cotton yarn and the cotton yarn uh, goes through either of these processes like weaving or uh, knitting so here we are talking about the knitted garments so the process is knitting it goes through knitting and the output of knitting process is a raw fabric what you can see in this picture and then the raw fabric goes uh, through a series of chemical processes called dyeing uh, washing and uh, compacting all the stuff and then finally you get the dyed uh, fabric which then goes through the finishing processes where it gets cut into the desired sizes and probably it goes through a printing process sometimes goes through embroidery process 
and then finally it goes to the stitching section where it gets sewed using sewing machines and then it goes for the quality checking and goes for the market so this is the rough uh, you know you know process how the cotton from the cotton plant gets converted into a into a you know garment so we'll see these processes in detail before we move further so what you see over here in the photograph uh, the first picture is the cotton from the cotton plant it will have the seed and sometimes the dust particles get clinged to this cotton so the the first step is this particular cotton uh, goes through a process called ginning and then all the seeds and the dust particles are removed uh, so it goes through uh, this uh, gin processor and then you get what you get as output is the uh, cotton fiber bale which is displayed in the last uh, picture where the cotton is uh, compressed together in a press and then it gets accumulated like a rectangle in a cuboid kind of a structure where you could see the the, the uh, cotton is given a particular shape of a cuboid where it is tightly compacted and then it gets packed and then it goes for the uh, spinning mill and to produce what is called as the yarn so the input for the spinning mill is the cotton fiber bale that comes from the ginning process and uh, the bale is a compressed form which cannot be uh, used directly in the spinning mill so in the spinning mill the bale is again the cotton bale is again uh, loosened and uh, it is uh, uh, made um, you know uh, in its original form it is made loosened and then uh, any of the dust particles are removed first and then it goes to the carding machine and then from the output of the carding machine is called as a sliver where the cotton fiber is teased into a web like structure and um, a multiple uh, layers of sleevers go together into the rollers to get uh, to get combined into one sliver and uh, the final output is called as yarn which gets wound wound up in the uh, bobbin or we call it as cone and then you see the bottom picture and that's how the cotton yarn looks like wound uh, on a bobbin okay and then the next process is uh, knitting again we have different process of uh, different uh, machines or uh, different methods of uh, knitting and the machine what you see over here in the screen is called as the circular uh, knitting machine and on the left side and the right side you could see the uh, yarn from the previous processes are brought together and are hooked into something called as the creels and from the creels the yarn goes into the uh, knitting machine and the out output of the knitting machine is the raw fiber you can see in the picture in the bottom where the raw fiber uh, raw fabric gets uh, coiled up uh, at the bottom okay from the knitting machine so all the yarns put together gets knitted together and then you get the uh, the raw fabric over there and the raw fabric is kind of a, a gray yellowish color and uh, uh, it has to be taken to the dyeing process where the required color is added with the help of chemical processes and we have again various um, dyeing processes what predominantly being used is the wet dyeing process and um, you could see the machinery so there and the uh, the rough fabric gets uh, its color and then uh, it comes up as the output so once the uh, fabric is uh, ready then it goes to the printing and the embroidery section if required so in printing also we have different types of printing like flat bed printing screen printing uh, unit printing so many printings we have and um, what you see in the first pictures are the screen printing and what you see in the bottom is the unit printing where say for example t-shirts uh, they first cut it into pieces into units and then it goes for the printing machine and um, if it is kind of a you know continuous cloth we go for the screen kind of a painting and then if required it goes into the embroidery machine and uh, the designs are fed into the systems and then the system executes the embroidery on the fabric 
so uh, after this uh, process it is almost the garment is ready and then it goes to the final finishing activities where it the garment will go into a cutting process where the um, the entire uh, the printed fabric is cut into the required sizes and then it goes to the sewing machines to get stitched up and then it goes for the checking and uh, <clears throat> before the checking a lot of accessories goes into the uh, garment as well say for example buttons zips or uh, collars pockets all this gets stitched up uh, and then it goes for the pressing section where it gets pressed neatly and then finally it moves on to the inspection where the quality aspects are checked and then it gets packed into the corrugated boxes in the first picture what you see is the cardboard uh, corrugated boxes and from there it is transported through the logistics service providers through and then it goes to the ports so this is how the fiber the cotton fiber gets converted into a fabric so that is the simple process and next we are going to discuss about our supply chain how come a, a customer who's in US gets his t-shirt from uh, the knitted garments which is being manufactured from the small city of Tirupur in India so that's what we are going to see on the one side we have the buyers and uh, the buyers from US you name the big brands like Nike, Tommy Hilfiger, US Polo uh, or even there are buyers like the chain retail stores like Walmart, JCPenney, they do sourcing from Tirupur. Apart from that even there are small standalone uh, retail brands also the uh, chain stores they source from Tirupur. Okay, So these are the buyers at the one side of this uh, supply chain. On the other side we have the supplies, uh, the primary raw metal is the cotton and then um, uh, Thirupur gets its cotton from its own state Tamil Nadu, also it gets uh, cotton from its neighboring states like Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is the state which is highlighted in yellow color in this particular uh, Indian map and uh, Andhra Pradesh is a state where which, which uh, accounts for uh, which is the second largest producing state in uh, uh, you know in terms of cotton if in in the country so that is very close by uh, nevertheless it is our neighboring state uh, still the transportation cost is involved over here but uh, the majority of the cotton comes from andhra and uh, you know tirupur gets the materials from these places uh, the primary raw material which is the cotton and uh, not just the cotton you have various other uh, raw materials as well uh, sometimes cotton is also imported from overseas to meet the quality requirements of the custom overseas customers and uh, many accessory items like buttons zips uh, these kind of items which goes into the uh, garments also uh, they get imported and uh, uh, there are units which are available locally as well in the city which can manufacture these kind of accessories and uh, dyes and chemicals which is a major uh, uh, raw material uh, which is produced locally as well and um, many times they are also being imported from other markets like China and uh, other countries machineries and systems are mostly imported the advanced technologies get imported from US, Japan and other countries. The labor market is uh, yet another uh, you know, major uh, um, you know, raw mat, uh, you know, input to the uh, manufacturing process. The labor uh, is uh, especially the migrant uh, workers and the, mostly it is the production process involves a lot of machines but then if you look at the, the final stages of finishing and even in the um, in the packaging and other things a lot of manpower is required so the uh, labor skilled labor is a major input for this particular industry and mostly the migrant workers are uh, um, in a part of this uh, labor workforce 
and uh, as I said, uh, they are from the states uh, within India, especially states from the north and northeast. And also we have migrants from the neighboring countries like Nepal and Sri Lanka working uh, in the city of Tirupur, making a livelihood out of this beautiful city. And the packaging items like the corrugated boxes, or the labels, all the stuff gets manufactured within the city. And um, there are other, uh, you know, raw materials like coal, wood and water which are required uh, in the production process. And um, coming to the detailed supply chain diagram, this is the diagram which represents the detailed supply chain. So let me go uh, take you through this supply chain. Just read with me. So on the first box, we have the cultivators, the farmers or the agriculturists who produce the cotton plants from which we get the cotton seed and then from that uh, it, it, uh, the cotton fiber is extracted through the process of ginning as we discussed in the earlier uh, slides. From there the cotton agents they source the fibers, they bring it to the spinning mills and uh, the spinning mills uh, and there are different levels of uh, cotton which is available so depending on the requirements these uh, cottons are sourced and then it goes to the spinning mills and the spinning mill as we discussed earlier produces uh, the uh, yarn and the yarn goes into the knitting units as the input for the knitting process and um, uh, from the knitting unit it goes for dyeing so uh, in uh, in Tirupur city, one of the major problem is it's not one company which does all the processes. There are different companies which do different processes. The ginning is done by a separate entity. The spinning activity is done by another company. Knitting is done by one company. Dyeing is done by another unit. The stitching or the finishing work is done by another unit. So. Uh, this is how, why the supply chain is a little complicated where the product moves through different entities. Uh, there are very few big companies which do many of these activities in one roof. But most of the units in Tirupur, you know, have this kind of a model. That's the main problem uh, in the Tirupur uh, city supply chain of the knitted garments. On the other side, you have the customers who buy their... Uh, 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 garments through the retailers or the retail chains and then the retail chain source it from the uh, the um, uh, directly from the knitting units in India or through uh, the different buyers for, from the overseas markets and the buyers from overseas markets and the uh, manufacturers in India especially the knitting units they get connected through uh, entity called as the buying agents who are the market intermediaries so uh, so they uh, form the link between the netting units and the buyers in terms of uh, providing the uh, uh, you know reach for the suppliers for the buyers and also for the uh, sub manufacturers getting the market access you know they support uh, uh, largely and they also do a lot of quality checking, testing and certification for the products which are very helpful for the buyer, overseas buyers. So um, and that, that's the link over there. And apart from this, there are other uh, factors like the, uh, if you take the dyeing house, we have the suppliers of dyes, the coal is needed to yeah, for the heating process, they use coal water is required for washing and other processing and then we have supplies of accessories in the finishing section where the button zips and other items are uh, supplied and then we also have the banks which is the financial institution which is very vital in terms of the documentation and the payment processes and then we also have the package suppliers like the corrugated boxes manufacturers or cotton manufacturers and then we have uh, the other suppliers in terms of machines and systems and electrical power suppliers is there the government agencies a major factor in terms of taxation policies and other support uh, services the government also forms a major uh, uh, role in the supply chain 
and then you also have the logistics providers um, you know who finally transports the finished garments to the final destination the end customer so there are a lot of uh, intermediaries and entities uh, who forms part of this particular supply chain and uh, the cotton uh, uh, knitted garment supply chain is huge and it's uh, uh, very complicated as well uh, with a lot of uh, factors uh, for the companies to manage so this is the brief description of the supply chain and I'll also explain you the entire process which goes through this particular supply chain. So on the one side we have the buyer, on the other side we have the customer um, and uh, we have the suppliers as well. And so the buyer uh, who deals with the customer primarily say for example if we take the US markets, the buyers know the local market requirements, the demand, the fashion trends, all the, all the information available with them. So with that predictions, they approach the buying agents who uh, is the market intermediary who connects the buyers with the uh, suppliers. So the buying agents finds an appropriate supplier with the required quality and with the capacity to meet the demands. And then the negotiations take place uh, between the buyer and the supplier in terms of the quantity quality requirements the payment requirements the shipment conditions all those um, terms and uh, conditions are uh, negotiated and uh, finalized and once this particular process is uh, finalized and then the officially the uh, man uh, the supplier can produce the garments but before that what they do is they do a sampling process uh, the, the sample is provided by the uh, the supplier the uh, seller and then it goes to the buying agent the buying agent uh, does the inspection as guided by the uh, the buyers and then they provide the inspection certificates and if it gets approved the sample gets approved then it goes for the further production if the sample gets rejected the sample units get shipped to the local markets where it finds a secondary market for the uh, rejected items and the sample if it gets approved then it goes for the production and the uh, the seller would uh, uh, try to source the materials right from cotton and all those raw materials what we discussed so they purchase cotton goes for the yarn production from the yarn production it goes for the knitting and then after the knitting it goes for dyeing and other related process like washing drying and all the stuff and then it goes to the final uh, finishing process where it gets cut stitched um, and the accessories are fitted so and then finally it goes for the quality check at the supplier end and then the buyer agent also checks the final production and then gives the certificate and uh, once it clears all the quality checking and inspections mm -hmm. the uh, finished uh, goods gets pack pa packaged with the help of the uh, you know the uh, corrugated boxes and then it gets shipped to the ports by the logistics companies and then finally it reaches the uh, buyer from the buyer it goes to the end uh, customer and then the payment get processed in the reverse direction from the customer and then finally it reaches the uh, the suppliers so that is the detailed uh, process that goes on into the supply chain of the knitted garments from Tirupur now few challenges and opportunities which I wanted to uh, highlight with regard to this particular supply chain. First moving on to the challenges. Um, uh, it's not because of the COVID-19 the challenges what I'm going to speak to you. Uh, um, even before uh, the COVID-19 crisis uh, the Tirupur city was facing a lot of problems especially from the buyer side. So the first challenge is the risk from the buyer side where um, many global brands they started to uh, you know downsize or uh, say for example this particular brand called mother care from uh, uk uh, they filed bankruptcy and then they had closed many shops as well and not only that even in the us 
the report says that almost 9000 textile retail stores from both us and um, european markets uh, closed down because they faced uh, stiffer competition from the online channel and also their cost of uh, the real estate was very high so they were not able to manage so because the retail stores uh, got closed the orders were cancelled or uh, the orders uh, they were not receiving the right number of orders and hence the uh, the tirpur um, market was already in the tirpur suppliers and manufacturers were already they were stressed out because they were not getting the sufficient orders and uh, even uh, the entire uh, 2019 uh, 20 year was very stressful for the manufacturers and uh, many small units they were not able to sustain and they have got closed down what happened after the covid crisis is the retailers cancelled orders from the asian factories so the global retailers big retailers who generally source from asian markets and even from the indian market uh, the hub of of indian uh, network government exports the tirpur many orders were cancelled and um, that resulted in a lot of people losing their job and also these companies getting into uh, financial trouble the other supply side factors which would act as a challenges were the availability of cotton that is hugely dependent on the monsoon rains in india so the farmers they depend on the monsoon rains to cultivate the uh, cotton and if in case the monsoon rains uh, fail and then uh, the farmers will not be able to produce the uh, cotton at the right time uh, which could be taken into the production line so that is a bigger challenge and if in case monsoon fails the cotton prices would go up and then that would have a final impact in the international markets as well sourcing prices of cotton heavily impact the pricing of the garments in international markets with stiff competition from countries like bangladesh and vietnam so india faces stiff competition in terms of pricing from bangladesh and vietnam which has better economies of scales their cost structure is very uh, competitive and indian um, companies need to um, really um, manage their uh, processes efficiently uh, in order to be competitive at the international market in terms of price and this um, the prices of cotton is one deciding factor which would determine the entire game accessories availability the right price is uh, it's another challenge many of the accessories are imported from china and uh, as china is uh, shut down it's very difficult to get the access at the right price and at the right quality so that is at another challenge skilled migrant workers what happened after this lockdown many uh, units were closed in the city of tirpur so the uh, workers were not paid the salaries properly they didn't have any job so many of the migrant workers they wanted to go back to their native places so many of them they went back and um, the um, uh industry is not sure whether would they come back again to tirpur or not because uh, they um, know that tirpur is under very high stressed situation to the 19 was bad and 20 is uh, getting worse because of the covid crisis and they they are not sure how many months it would take or how many years it would take for tirpur to recover so many have already migrated and if there are no skilled laborers what would these industries do without the skilled laborers how they are going to sustain their business that is a ten other challenge many of the units that perform spinning dyeing and finishing works are closed already due to the financial stress as i said not a single company manufactures the entire garment it goes through a series of small entities which does which or uh, which specializes in one particular activity called dyeing or uh, uh, spinning so these kind of you know small units have already closed down because of the financial crisis which they have been facing throughout the in year of 2019-20 and finally uh, it was uh, you know very difficult to handle this covid crisis for them and they have already closed down so these are other the supply uh, factors what if, if the spinning mills are closed uh, from where would you get yarn so again will you import yarn from somewhere else it's again going to be costly it will uh, increase your cost structure as well or if imagine the dyeing units are closed they are not opening 
Now again, where will you go for the dying process? It is highly challenging for the industries uh, to get, or uh, otherwise the, uh, the the garments will get stuck as a work in progress, and then it will not go to the next stage. And then because of this, you will not be able to deliver the products at the right time. And then all these things are going to have a long term impact on the Indian markets. And once you lose your client in the international market, it's very difficult to get back to them. Say, for example, in India, they get a bad experience. And then the, if the client decides to go to, say, Bangladesh or Vietnam. And it's very difficult to bring them back to India. So it's a huge challenge for the Indian manufacturers, especially from the city of Tirupur. And, uh, and these Tirupur city uh, 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 mills and uh, the entities, the businesses, uh, are undergoing deeper financial stress. And here I've taken few news articles from the um, uh, Financial Express a leading newspaper in India. Uh, I would read a few things like about 25 to 30 percent of orders had been cancelled across various product categories. So it's almost a third of the orders are cancelled. So that's a very bad sign. Like 50 to 60 percent of the uh, you know exports uh, is being uh, you know expected to come down. Tripur Export Association President has said in the last paragraph. We have not even received our payments for the exports that had happened in the month of January and February. So goods have been shipped for January and February, but payments were not received. That's a big problem. And then uh, for the month of March, uh, the stocks are uh, dispatched. Probably they are in transit or they are in some ports, uh, not able to move further. So what will happen to those goods? How will they get the payment? And for the next cycle of production, orders had already been placed. Goods might have already come, the raw materials. To do the production, the factories are in lockdown and then employees have already, labors have already moved out. So on one side you have piled up raw materials, on the other side you have finished goods which you are not able to move it, move it out. On the other side you have the dispatched items the fulfilled orders for which you are not getting payments and the entire payment mechanism is frozen and these companies are deeply stressful how will they pay their employees how will they pay their wages how will they meet their working capital requirements how will they pay their bank loans they are in very deep deep trouble and uh, the covid crisis has put these uh, manufacturers in deep trouble because they might default or they will default in their bank loans. So the Tirupur Exporter Association has sought out for the government help in terms of giving them a one year moratorium on repayment of loans. So this is the expectation of the Tirupur Exporters Association uh, you know, from the government to give them one complete year moratorium. But I am sure they are not very confident about will it uh, be enough for just one year. Uh, it's very difficult to say. But then um, the Tirupur Exporter Association had taken steps in asking the government to give the one year of moratorium on, on the repayment of the loans. So that is another big challenge the financial stress the fourth big challenge in the supply chain is the economies of scale if you look at the markets like uh, vietnam and bangladesh they have huge economies of scale they are able to gain a competitive advantage on uh, because of the economies of scale whereas the uh, indian manufacturers especially from tirupur they lack economies of scale and that's a big threat from the competitors and the main reason behind this is the manufacturing processes of the knitwear is done with different entities as I said earlier and the manufacturing is not done by the big entities uh, probably uh, which could gain the scale but then they have smaller smaller units which does these jobs because of that they are not able to gain economies of scale 
and their cost of production is high compared to the Bangladeshi market or the uh, Vietnam and because of that at the international market they face huge problems with their costing there are many uh, you know exporters they do exports uh, even at a very minimal you know margin uh, not able to sustain the price competition from the other uh, markets so that is a, a very huge structural problem what the industry faces and um, it's very difficult to you know tackle this particular situation to gain economic scale india also exports cotton um, to other countries so what happens when they export cotton sometimes the export prices are high and uh, that affects the production of the uh, knitwear garments and uh, the cotton price movements would f- definitely affect the final the prices of the knitwear garments again the it is going to um, you know the indian uh, manufacturers are going to lose lose the uh, fight to the competition because of their higher uh, prices the price movements not only the cotton price movements even any of the raw materials like the dyes and chemicals if uh, they move higher uh, indians would face tremendous tremendous problem because already they don't have economies of scale and your raw material prices are going up it means in the international market your margins are going to get crushed or otherwise you would be taken over by your competition so these are the four uh, main challenges of this supply chain let us quickly move on to the opportunities uh, in this uh, covid situation uh, what had happened is the indian government has recently approved the um, you know knitwear uh, manufacturers to produce the uh, masks which are uh, uh, non surgical masks uh, which could be manufactured and uh, uh, the, um, the tirupur exporter association expects that they would be able to quickly make almost 1 do- 1 billion dollar of sales uh, in terms of exporting the uh, pp items and uh, the masks to international markets and um, <clears throat> already they have started getting huge orders okay. from the international markets and of course tirupur also supplies to the local markets the ppe and the uh, the masks so that is a great uh, opportunity on the one side you are not getting orders for the knitwear uh, garments but on the other side you get the covid is one way a blessing to the tirupur garment manufacturers in terms of producing the pp items and the masks and on the other hand a lot of positives are coming up slowly once the countries across the globe they started to relax the lockdown um, it is noted that europe and us uh, from both europe and us they are started to getting uh, back their orders uh, especially through the online uh, retailers rather than um, the brick and mortar retailers uh, who are facing huge competition from the online retailers now they are started to getting orders from the online stores so that's a really good sign for the tirupur uh, manufacturers uh, another encouraging factors like uh, you know anti china feeling which is spreading in the global markets um, with this you know india is expecting to gain out of this particular anti china feeling and they feel that that would bring new orders um, more orders to india uh, which would support the tirupur manufacturers to get back Uh, to their feet so that is another um, opportunity which is being cited so hope you got a complete picture of the tirupur the knitwear manufacturing process the supply chain and the challenges and the opportunities that is per existence in this particular uh, supply chain uh, thank you for uh, uh, joining me and listening to my lecture and um, uh, have a wonderful learning experience through this knowledge exchange program with Krishna Jindi College thank you so much bye bye